evolution kind of thing, a proper sound system that people can hear. Um, you want to get a handle, who's a uh, uh, yeah. stylist. He's been here for no one's. And he put it in his backpack <laughs> so that when he was standing like this, people could hear him. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> but, uh, This is from a music store, and it's uh, it runs like the a dozen batteries, or it can be plugged in. But the trouble is the microphone. The musicians like a microphone they can hang out to you. I couldn't find a headset. I'm not sure they have a headset. Uh, but um, this makes good sound. It's small. And if I don't get too close to it, um, it works pretty good. So anybody not hearing, just let me know and I'll turn it up. Water. <laughs> 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 uh, who's taking the course to the one of these? I don't know if you got it. If you got it on the um, if you got it off the computer then give it away to somebody. of teaching. I've been teaching for 25 years plus, and uh, I think I finally got reasonably good at it in the last couple of years trying to figure out really what people need to learn in the last couple of years. And it's on this one. It talks about the simplest things are what people don't learn. The very simplest thing is how wet's the paper. The next thing is how much paint you brush. Sounds so simple. How did I miss that? Yeah. So I missed that for years and years. And that's the biggest problem I see with, with uh, painters is they don't understand that. They don't have enough paint to brush and the paper's too dry. That's the two big errors. We'll deal with that right now. Well, unfortunately, water is necessary for water color, so we'll get some more. Outdoors, um, where I prefer to paint, the first thing I do is take a jug of water, a bucket of water, and throw it on. Can't do that here. It's you have to visualize that because it's, it's an important concept. It gets people's attention. I just think about it. <laughs> and they haven't seen that before, so if it registers in your head, hey, this guy uses a lot of water. Paints on wet paper. So that way you remember that. One time though, a, a friend of mine was sitting right there and I went, whoosh. All of them. Is he still a friend? <laughs> Yes. I, I gave him the painting when I was done. He said, okay, you can douse me anytime. Yeah, so this is such a tiny amount. But the very first thing, though, um, I was thinking about that today. There's, there's painters, and there's copiers, there's illustrators, and there's creative artists. Um, I'm prejudiced towards the creative side. I like to, to adjust it and make it my own thing. But I have great respect for the illustrators and the copiers if they know how to design. What I see is a, a really gifted Illustrator who can do beautiful work, they understand the technique, 
but they can't compose a painting out of what's there. They have to copy exactly what's there. So that's the first thing I think is the word to compose. Uh, that's a big topic. There's a painter named Edgar Payne, P-A-Y-N-E, Edgar Payne. He wrote a little book on painting, which I've got a couple of copies. Um, he gave 15 basic landscape compositions. There are variations of those, but I found them very true. And if you get the book, it's been reprinted recently. Edgar Payne, I forgot, I'm sorry I forgot the title and I didn't read the book. But it's, um, should be easy to find with that name, P-A-Y-N, because he's a very uh, famous painter of the last century. Um, and he goes through those compositions. The bathroom would too. like the volume up just a little bit. A little more volume. <coughs> Sorry about when we blasted out here. How's that? Better. If I stay away from it, <coughs> keep the microphone, we'll make it. <coughs> if this could be raised up, let's put it up. That's what I was just going to ask. Yeah, on the top of it. Put it on that bookcase. Run in the place already. There we go. Ah, yeah, that, that carries a little better. If I stay far enough, far enough away, it'll be all right. Um, there's several others of written no. good books. That okay, these are from people now. who are taking the class. Oh, I thought um, he said to pass them on. Edgar no. Whitney. Something about the name Edgar, I guess, is important. But Ed Whitney wrote a uh, standard watercolor book, too. He's the one that really started the watercolor workshops. In the 1940s, and, and he taught um, all the big names that you know now: Frank Webb, Skip Lawrence, um, uh, Tony Couch. Um, there's a couple of others I can't think of. But he, he was their teacher. And they're passing it on now to the next generation. So, what subject would you like? I'll let you go. What would you like to see? Ocean. Ocean? Yeah. Waters? Okay. Uh, surprise, surprise. You're not tired of that? You're not tired of that? Yeah. Fantasy. That's why you live here, right? I don't know. I was going to the house. Yeah. How about a lighthouse? <laughs> 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 Yeah, I, I like that as a subject because the ocean subject is very easy. It's it's very much uh, something you must compose first, so it fits the uh, the ideal. So we'll do that. So the first rule of composition I follow is dominance. So by dominance, I mean I want the easiest way to do it is pick three things, a big thing. Almost as big thing and a little thing. It's the papa bear, mama bear, baby bear. You can have two or three baby bears, but you can only have one mama and one papa. So those will be rocks because the ocean is so amorphous and flowing that. Um, can't make that as a shape itself very easily. You can. Frederick Waugh did it. W-A-U-G-H. Frederick Waugh, the greatest seascape painter of all time. And he would paint an entire painting. I've seen I've seen him as big as this wall. Just an open ocean. Nothing else. Just fabulous. But anyway, I digress. We'll go to reshape some. Pick one big one over right here. These are the, um, the rocks I'm most familiar with down in Mendocino. They're big, flat rocks. Let's go like that. A little pool on top. Big rock. A baby rock. Yeah. And we need a mama rock. So. Put it here. <laughs> and this 
this also demonstrates shapes, because the, the shapes uh, next to the design, the shapes make the excitement. A good shape is defined as by Ed Whitney. A dynamic oblique, differing in its length and breadth with interlocking incident at the edges. <laughs> okay, translation. <laughs> it's a diagonal and it's longer. There's a diagonal, it's longer than it is wide, and it's got edges that hang open. Hang on to the ground and stuff around it. So it's come like that. So these are interlocked, these two pieces. I taught a, a children's class once and I said, okay, you draw five shapes on here. And you draw them so that when you cut them out, they're lying flat. You can't pull it apart like a puzzle. So that illustrates the interlocking edges. And it also illustrates the design because they have to have five pieces, all different sizes, it's not so easy. You have to be, if you get the, the, the diagonal on some of them, all the better. So, there's your painting. All right. Wow. <laughs> to show, um, to, get out. to me, an ocean scene, to action. So I, 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 I learned to show the action, the arrows. So I remember a man came. Okay, the, the ocean. Coming back? Oh, no, I've got we'll equipment at 1 o'clock. Down okay. like this. Come in like this. And around like this. Maybe across like that. That's how the water will flow. So I just put the arrows to remind you that. I'll erase them later. You have a sponge, a wet sponge. And this will get tedious. You have to wait for all this to be happening. bottles sometimes, but usually not. There's something you can't see, and they take it off so you can see it. Great, thanks. And I want to rub on it because it rubs the, the sizing off the paper, which takes the paint a little better. If you look from the side, see what you see? dry places and there's wet places. So I preserve some of those dry places because I need some hard edge. Could you wait five minutes for the sponge? He's Rike one. has one. She's right next door. We got oh, got one. Okay. No, I don't think this crowd's in the mood to wait any longer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to paint the white surf. Watch carefully. <laughs> it's an important step to think of that. Uh, let's mix up some dark ocean color, phthalo blue. See how thick that is? It won't even run. So now it turns, you know, turns a nice green. Can you hold that up higher? 
This brings us to brush strokes. Notice how I did that brush stroke very slowly, very deliberately, so that it would cover the area without skipping. There's no hurry, nice and slow, bring it across. So I don't want that. See, it's not wet there, so it leaves a rough edge. That I want down here, but I don't want it up here. So that's about as much paint as you can get on there. Do the same thing. Lots of paint. Skip just a little bit. Looks like a wave off in the distance. Mm -hmm. Really thick. Scoop it up. And here's my rock down here. So that's going to come down. Tiny bit of water, just enough so they can mix more. And I can look at the paper from the side and stuff. So I've got time. It still is um, wet. It still has that velvety look to it. You don't want it shiny. Shiny is too wet. Like velvet, see very jacket or something it's a fleece the fleece that has the appearance of the fleece nobody has that ran where I didn't expect it so you have to be an opportunist in this. so I'll use that let's make something happen there maybe there's a little splash there Yes. Cheap, cheap jobs. Oh, okay. So let's put some more, more water, less paint, and show uh, more foamy, shallower water moving down. Edges. There's a rough edge, there's a soft edge, there's a hard edge. This makes it more soft edges here by just taking a damp brush. And creating some soft edge. Just to create a little tone where I want it. So 
a little bit right there. You can take a damp brush and go back into where there's paint. Take a little bit off. That might work better up here somewhere. A little wind blowing something down. That last one was probably too much. Do your thing one or two times and get out. If I make to this. this is beautiful sponge. I hate to do this. It's never going to be the same. Because the phthalo is what we call a staining color, and it does stain. Here's phthalo green. Lots of water. With the paper that's still slightly damp. You can feel it's still damp. Mm -hmm. Here I can go a little faster. Not that I need to, it's just so you won't be bored. <laughs> Not bored. <laughs> Let's create a little pattern. Sloshing surf close to the rocks. I'm going to put a little pool of water on top of this rock here, so I'll do that for a bit. Cobalt blue best illustrates uh, sky reflection, usually. Well, there's no sky in this. Okay, kind of a big mess. <laughs> but I like this mess. It's just the mess that I wanted. So I can go in now and do the big rocks, and all of a sudden, it happens. But you've got to do this first. <coughs> all right, let's go with the uh, ultramarine blue, Bertiana. Just put out a big fresh patch last night. Again, that's pretty thick, pretty thick. This comes to another problem in watercolor painting. People talk about mud. You all worry about mud? How do you not paint mud? Very simple. Make it warm or make it cool means more reddish or more bluish. If you get red in the middle, that's mud. So this is, I hope, warm with mud. You never know until you put it on because it's so thick. Yeah, that's too dark. That to read warm. Not warm enough, just take some spring burns in and put it in there so it warms it up. Yeah, there we go. Of 
Quick brush stroke on relatively dry paper will leave a rough edge like this. Brush flat, fast stroke, dry paper equals rough edge. That's real basic, important stuff. I'm going to use two or three colors, so I'm going to introduce another one. A little bit of permanent rose. And with the ultramarine blue. And do some more rock. And we're going to worry a lot about the edge on the bottom because here's the surf coming into it. So let's make a rough edge down there. But how do we do a rough edge? Dryer brush. Let's try. <coughs> Suppose I want a soft edge. Wet paper. Too much paint. Use the same spot. Wet paper. Wet paint. Soft edge. Watch it. It'll blend. That's getting a little disorganized right there. So you know, I gotta explain this puddle, so I gotta build up rocks around it. So much splash up there. Accidentally got into some green, so if I want to, if you will learn to save money because pink costs so much. If I got into some green accidentally, I want to make a gray. What do I do? Add the red. Yes. Who said that? I would have said one of your students. Extra credit. <laughs> Neglected mama. So let's make mama warmer. <coughs> There's some pretty ugly stuff we're mixing up here, but maybe it'll look better in paper. That's kind of green. Um, don't make rocks green. You can make them any color but green. Yeah, sometimes they have a little moss on them. Let's just get some. Why do you think that's so green? I know because I accidentally put the brush into the um, quinacridone gold. Quinacridone gold is a beautiful color, but if you mix it with anything, it turns green. edge down here because it's got to define the water. So it's good. Get a variety of edge up. There needs to be some soft edge there. I'm we'll have to try to find a clean brush. That'll be fabulous. Yeah, 
Was it decaf? Or? <laughs> no. I'm just doing it so you can see. So usually you paint more at, a, at an angle like that. Right, because the, it runs. Another job for the girls in the back of my car is a, is a mat. It's a big white thing like this, right on top of everything. <laughs> to leave a lot of white. Well, they don't, they don't want to leave a lot of white going off the side. So generally we'll tint that off. Just very slightly. Have you discovered that Yeah. If you leave a lot of white, people just look right out to the next page. Mm -hmm. so Getting down with smaller brushes and you know, on the home stretcher. That's it. At this point, it's a good idea to put it in the display frame. Thank <laughs> you. 
just had that carpet clean. It's just water. Yeah. Only if he wants one. Does he want one? I just, I'm almost done. I'll just put it back here. I'm okay. Does he, does he want it? Yeah. That's too big. That little table up right up there by the television, if you take the stuff off. That's of not the first mishap for this one. <laughs> this was in the back of a Volkswagen station wagon in Italy two years ago. We got it rear ended. Oh, it it's it's smashed it's straight. It's flat. Fortunately, I had a group of 24 artists there. And fortunately, the girl that usually sat in the back was sick and stayed home. Because she would have gotten squashed because it was oh, wow. squashed this. up some more dark, more dark hair, and uh, that'd make a good dark brown, or see how I'm altering the, put some accents on the rocks, rocks just need three values, dark, darker, and darkest. <laughs> I love them because they're so abstract. And the copiers can, can paint beautiful rocks by copying just how they are. That's fine. As long as they arrange them and design them. I'm good with it. so dark there, you're not appreciating the subtleties over there. But that's kind of well here, but. That's why Homer lived in Prout's Neck, Maine. Have you ever been oh, there? Maine, yeah, right. Prout's Neck, Maine is just rock, cliffs yeah. and rocks, beautiful rocks. So uh, that's why he was there. But in Florida, you from one horizon to the other side, and there's nothing. <laughs> just yeah, a little sign out in his yard, because there was a field, and there was this house, and so many tourists came. put a little sign out that says snakes. <laughs> <laughs> You must be careful of his field trips because when he makes a big detour, you oh. think, I can cut across there, and did, and found it was 
full of snakes. <laughs> you remember that day? I don't remember that. At the lily pond, and June and I took the shortcut through the <laughs> through the meadow or wherever you want to call it, where the water was, and it was loaded with snakes. And John's laughing because <laughs> there was a little twelve-year-old boy with us, and he's screaming, "Snakes, snakes, snakes!" And and I was carrying all my things and I couldn't see my feet. I just threw my stuff over the chair and ran. And so John had to go back and get all of our stuff. <laughs> my uh, main influence and teacher was a gentleman named Vernon Nye, who uh, I got to tell a story about him once. He started painting in Mendocino. <laughs> He's painting along, and all of a sudden he starts dancing. I've never seen him dance. He's, not like that. He's dancing, slapping his side. And we're all laughing. So what's wrong? He, he runs off by me. There was a, he started painting over a yellow jacket nest. They were tying up his leg. Oh. up his leg, and they were stinging him. And he's oh. Jeez. It was really funny. <laughs> For you, Josh. Price was time. Here, I'll Another thing you keep that and I'll pass it clean. Wipe it off. Yeah, nice. Uh, anybody have any eraser? Point eraser. This is a chaotic, disorganized painting, but that's what the ocean feels like to me. A place like this is a lot of chaos, a lot of movement, but still has a basic, basic order with the, the shapes. These are kind of lined up, so I'm put something down here to to dis disrupt the alignment. It creates more of a diagonal. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I tried to get the. I painted over most of the pencil. But <laughs> we had a jury art show for in high school, and we had a painting, a boy who was painting of a, a water splashing up on the rocks. Louder. <laughs> oh, the water was splashing up on the rocks, and it was beautiful. But I said, wait a minute, that looks like John Hewitt's painting. <laughs> and I ran into the other room, but there it was. The same painting hanging in the other room. And it was his painting. He had given a workshop. Uh, Dorothy Ishway had taken the workshop, and then she taught the students. <laughs> <laughs> so, he did good. <laughs> Great story, Sylvia. You need to go back there. Let's see what it looks like. Look at the TV. Look at the TV. Okay, yeah, that works. Yeah, just look over there. Okay, that's what I want. Let's get this down. John, look at the TV. It's stuck on the corner.
just a regular mat, eight ply mat, it's thicker, painted with gesso. So if it gets dirty, I just paint it again. <laughs> I like that rock right there. <laughs> <laughs> here, here, I'll give you a better. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> <There. Somebody's hair. laughs> okay. ended up having two, uh, two different design elements. I've got the three pieces here, which are the two big ones and then two or three little ones. But I also have uh, bands, one, two, three. And each one is a different width, bigger, smaller, in between. And the interest comes through this portion. The points of interest should always be there, 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 or there. So here it's at least close to it. So trying to make it in this area right here. Where the water hits here and splashes over here. And you got a little reflecting pool there. So I'll probably take uh, some gouache or something, paint a little white or two there. Which will, uh, any light form, you know, center of interest, another important interest. So we're covering the whole course in, in half an hour. <laughs> center of interest is the area of greatest contrast Or a life form. Or a life form. Or a life form. A life form will always steal, particularly human, will steal your eye from anything else. That's the way we are. We're, we're, we're interested in other humans, and we're all interested in animals that we can eat. <laughs> so you'll notice those things. If you don't have either of those, you're going to notice the highest contrast whether it be the idea or color. So if I, if I was, this is all a lot of green. If I was to put a bright orange spot here somewhere, that would help. If I was to put a um, person there, that would be a dumb place for a person. That would be really <laughs> soon. Um, but, so a bird would be okay, because birds can get away. Yes. So, we stayed at the Mill Creek Campground. The guy gave a nice talk about tsunamis. He <laughs> <laughs> showed maps of Crescent City. He showed yeah. the, the map, the part that was wiped out to 9th Street. So if you live in 9th Street or above, you're okay. <laughs> Actually, when I first moved here all these years ago, I lived on 9th Street. So I didn't know it, but I was just out of the so this does need uh, some birds would be nice. Uh, I could put some in. If you put a person there, did you think about the scale? I did it once. I put a person in a painting like this, put three of them. And there was a bigger rock here, and I had them running like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You got an international show. I get my green color in
That's what the calls are. Black wing tips, orange beaks, and orange feet. Paint the hose where you want them and just kind of fill it. <laughs> Any other requests? I want a sea urchin.